Here we go, folks. We're going to talk about air brakes. I'm going to talk a little fast, but not faster than what I've done. Now, just try and keep up. I'm going to do this in two different ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is teach the KISS method. Keep it simple, Skip. I'm going to give you the very short, direct, abbreviated version of how you can put this together in your mind and understand it. That's important. Then, once we get all this in, I'm going to turn the projector back on and we'll go through the book. And that should be a real quick run over and brush over just a few add-ons. Okay, everybody good with that? Okay, so for those of you that took the air brake test last night, hopefully this answers some of your questions. Air brakes. Um, it's another endorsement on the test. You'll need to take this. If you're driving the big bus, you'll need to take this. So let's start with an air compressor. Basically, if you compress air, put it under pressure, we can use that to power things and, and operate things under a great deal of pressure and power. So to have an air compressor, first thing we need to do is compress air. So let's start with that. Can everybody see if I write it right about here? We're good with that? Okay. Are you okay with that? I'm gonna try my best. If I get in the way, just yell, hey, flip to the other side. Okay, so there's the compressor. Now we have to turn that on and turn it off. It's called cut in and cut out. Cut in pressure, turn on pressure, is anything less than 100 pounds. Turn off pressure, cut off pressure, is 120 plus or minus five. That little switch mechanism just keeps turning it on and off, okay? Little governor. So all your pressure systems, all your air systems on every commercial vehicle is running between 100 and 120 pounds. When we say normal operating range, that is normal operating range. Does everybody understand that? Two things happen to air when you compress it. Does anybody know what those two things are very quickly? Yeah. It heats up, it, it increases in temperature because we're forcing friction. We're forcing molecules against themselves. That creates friction. That friction will increase temperature. The second thing is moisture. In the atmosphere right now, we have water in the air. It's in gas form, correct? When we compress it, it changes that form from gas back to liquid, okay? Now, when you think about the air systems, think about breathing through a little straw, a little coffee stir type straw. Everybody with me on that? Mm -hmm. Do you want anything in that straw if that's the only way you can breathe? Mm -hmm. No, that's about the size of your valves in your air system. Mm -hmm. Do not compromise your air system, which means we need to get all the air or the water out of this, no dirt in this, no bugs in this. It has to stay completely clean. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get rid of that moisture so we're going to run that over here to a unit called an air dryer. And that's going to be connected with the governor that turns the compressor on and off. So when the compressor turns on, the air dryer turns on. When the compressor turns off, that turns off. Now, if you're next to an air vehicle, you're going to eventually hear it go, Pish! right? Have you heard that? That is the air dryer expelling all the moisture that it collected during that cycle. You want to pay attention to that because if there's oil in that, that means that there's probably a problem with the compressor and it's allowing oil to escape. That should be just moisture coming out of there, just the water coming out of there. That's it. If this is going off every 30 seconds and you're not using air, there's a problem. Listen to your vehicle. It should go off and that should be the end of it until you start using air. Okay? Everybody good so far? Okay. From the compressor, we go to the dryer. The dryer is not going to get all the moisture out, so that's going to go to an air tank. Okay. Air only goes one way through the system though. So with the air tank, we're gonna put a valve on here, a little drain. Now at the end of the day, that's when we drain it because that's when it's its warmest. There are automatic tank drains, there's manual tank drains. However it is, it's your responsibility to make sure it's drained at the end of the shift. Okay, get the moisture out. Now, second thing, to keep the air going one way, we're gonna put a one-way valve in there. One-way check valve. That allows a ball and socket. Air pushes in, the ball goes in towards the tank, it allows air to escape and go into the tank. When you stop pushing air in, it brings that ball back into the socket and seats it up. So that's what holds it in. Everybody good on that? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, what happens if this doesn't turn off? If that doesn't turn off, we have a problem, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there has to be a safety valve in there because if this doesn't turn off and we get too much air in there, the system can explode. The safety valve will be mounted at the top of the tank. Okay. There, what's going on? 
safety valve. That will open up at 150 pounds pressure. Okay. When you hear that, that's just like a, a compressed, a spring compressed thing like you have on your hot water tank. The spring will compress at 150 pounds pressure, allow air to escape through the, uh, the tank. Okay. When the air gets below 150, the spring wins and closes the valve back up. It's a very simple idea. Okay. It's going to sound horrible though when it goes on. Any questions on this? Okay, from this, we're going to go into the braking system. We have the steer tire over here. We'll have the drive tires over here. From the air tank, it's going to go to these valves to stop the vehicle. Very simple idea. That is called a single air brake system, and it's obsolete. You will not see that unless you see an old vehicle like in the 70s or older. Why did I take the time to teach that? Because you need to know the basics first. What is the main engineering flaw or defect in that type of system? You're right, there's no backup. If the system has anything compromised, we've lost the system, right? Everybody with me on that? Great, so they come up with a better idea. We'll add another air tank. Same valves now, so we have the one way there, we have the safety valve and a drain. Everybody with, that? with me on that? Mm -hmm. Let's label these so we can identify the tanks. So this one will be your primary tank. This one will be your secondary tank. This one will be tank one. This will be tank two. This will be a wet tank. This will be a dry tank, okay? This will be the front tank. This will be the rear tank. You see how this goes? You see the rhythm that they have here? When you walk up to the vehicle, the first tank you encounter will be your primary. The second one after that will be your secondary, okay? If they roll front to back on the vehicle, primary is towards the front. Now that we have established all of that, Let's run those airlines to the exact same set of valves. So we have two air systems running side by side through the entire vehicle, vehicle running to the same set of valves. Here's the cool part. On a normal day, your secondary system operates everything in the cabin forwards. Your primary system will operate everything behind the cab. Normal day, give or take. Let's say we're going down the road. Primary system is doing all the work. Secondary system is just hooked up. If we blow the primary system, that valve will flip and the secondary will take over and, and do all the major stuff that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Same with the secondary. So if the secondary is doing all the work, we blow the secondary system, the valve will flip and the primary system will take over and do all the major stuff. Mm -hmm. This is not a drive from here to California scenario. This is going to help you get that vehicle to a safe stop. That's all we're after. So just because we have a set of checks and balances here doesn't mean we're going a long ways once something goes down. Any flaw, any defect, any problem in the air brake system, what, will we, what do we do? Stop right away and get it fixed. That's going to be critical. Remember, this is about safety. So you would stop, get it fixed immediately. Any questions on this? Great, let's talk about the gauges. So we could have two gauges, right? If there's one on top of the other, which one's gonna be on top? Primary is on top, secondary is below. If they're side by side, primary, secondary. Fantastic. Let's go over here. I'll draw. We could have one gauge in there, right? Just leave that up there in case anybody wants to take a picture. Let's do one gauge and we'll throw two needles in it. One's going to be longer than the other. Which one do you think would be primary? Which one do you think would be secondary? Primary longer. No, think about a clock. The hour hand on the clock is a shorter one, it's the most important one. So, therefore, when you're thinking about this, the shorter one is your primary, the longer one is your secondary. Your primary will be green or white. Your secondary will be red or orange. Okay, we're good on this so far? Fine, let's put some numbers on this gauge. 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. Fantastic. Everybody with me on those numbers so far? Wow, I lost my brain today, folks. Holy moly. Yeah, I get so nerved up. Oh, I got them. I put them in a safe spot, don't worry. <laughs> okay, we say normal operating range. What is normal operating range? 100 to 120. 100 to 120. So that means that those needles should always be in that zone. Everybody with me on that? What's the maximum pressure? 150, right? That's the danger zone. So if we get too far, there's your light, your buzzer, and your safety valve. 
most common one is loss of air, crack in the line, broken fitting, broken chamber, something went wrong. So we need something to warn us when we're losing air, right? By law, we have to have a light and a buzzer on before when? 60. Before 60, right? So let's do that. Coincidentally, our maximum governor is 20 or 120. What's half of 120? 60. 60. Remember, just cut it in half. There's your light. There's your buzzer. Now, what's half of 60? 30. 30. Okay. Now, that's when the brakes are going to start coming on, but we will give it a range. It's going to go 20 to 45. That's the range where the brakes are going to start to reapply in the vehicle. Did I lose anybody at this aspect yet? We'll talk about why the brakes come on in a few minutes. Right now, just understand the air compressor has an on-off switch, 100 to 120, right? We have to get the moisture out of the air. There's the air dryer. Put it in the primary and the secondary tank. These tanks filled up, they have one-way check valves on them, okay? They have safety valves on them, they have drains on them, prepare to go through the system. We're good with this? If anybody needs to take a picture of that, hurry up and take it. I'm gonna erase it here in a minute. So you gotta do it really fast, folks. I'm down to 16 minutes. We might run over. Okay. Again, keep it simple. This is the key to this. Keep it simple. All right. We're good. Five, four, three, two. Done. Okay. Hope you got it. Okay. Feel guilty, Rich. Let's talk about why the truck breaks now. Why the truck would stop. Why the loss of air. Okay. There are two ways to stop a wheel from going around. We can push it from the inside out, right? So that would be what type of braking system? Drum braking, right? Because you have the pads on the inside, they push against the drum that's going around. The other one would be to grab onto the wheel from the outside, right? That would be disc brakes. That's what a lot of your cars have on, they have disc brakes, right? You have the caliper, and that's pushing on the pads, which push on the rotor, and that stops the wheel. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Do they put disc brakes on commercial vehicles? Yes, okay? What is the most common type to have on a commercial vehicle, though? Drum, drum brakes. Okay, so that's the one I'm going to try and draw. I didn't get the job because I can draw. If you can draw better than me, come on up there. Okay, there's the circle. There's your drum. Okay, it's a circle. Work with me. Okay, here's your brake shoes. The brake shoes will sit on the inside. Okay, so on one side, they'll be mounted by pins. And on the other side, we're going to spread it apart. Okay, there's a couple things we could do to spread it apart over there. We could put little pistons in there with, or a cylinder with pistons coming out. Put a big wedge in there. The most common is an S cam. It's in the shape of an S. When the S stands up, it forces them apart. When the S lays down, it allows the shoes to come away from the drums. Do you remember yesterday we talked about how much brake shoe we need? Quarter inch, right? So what happens at the top here, they'll put a little Y in there and then it's, it comes down into a notch. So they're all set like that. When that notch disappears, okay, we're there, quarter inch. Because you think about it, they're mounted over here with pins, so that means this side of the shoe is going to wear faster. Mm. Okay, everybody with me on that? We're good? Fantastic. Let's get into what turns the S. We'll attach a shaft to that. Okay, permanently mount it. So when the shaft turns, turns the S. We're good? Need something to turn the shaft now. So they put a lever on that. So now when that lever pushes on that shaft, it gives it power, right? Fantastic. Here's the problem though. What happens to those brake shoes over time? Which means that lever would have to go where? Farther. A little farther, right? What happens to the drums over time? Well, Same problem, has to go a little bit farther. Well, eventually it can't go far enough, right? Mm -hmm. So what they did is they've made this an adjustable mechanism. Okay, so they put an adjustment on that. That means, that we'll call this a slack adjuster. Okay, this is an S cam. All right. So now, the old school slack adjusters were manuals, manual slack adjusters, which means you had to get out there and adjust them all the time, okay? How well do you think that worked out in the rain and, the, and everything else? Probably not so much, right? 
they were kind of miserable. Since the 90s, though, they said no more of that. They went with automatic slack adjusters since 1991. Now, with automatic slack adjusters, every time you step on the brake and release, it's going for the adjuster. Think about a socket set. You got the ratchet, you know what I'm talking about? You got that, you're trying to get that one last click. That's what this is doing all the time. Okay? So they're always in adjustment. We're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the automatic slack adjuster, this will adjust. Now when we go down a hill, brake shoes are wearing out. We're doing that on again, off again braking. Remember that get on the brake, slow it down five. If we did that right, this is adjusting every time. So as the brake shoes are wearing going down the hill, we're staying in adjustment. As, the brake, as we're going down the hill, this drum will get hot and expand. The brakes will keep up with the drum. That's why we do this, okay? Brake fade is when this temperature between the shoe and that drum, it gets so hot, the shoes will start to melt, okay? Metal melts, this whole thing will start to melt. That's what's causing the brake fade, okay? Now, let's get something to push the slack adjuster. Let's hook up a rod to it. Well, a rod, a piece of metal like that, there's only one way to do it, they put a clevis on there. So that's just going to screw on that little cylinder, kind of like a, a nut and a bolt, if you will. We'll put a pin in this, and now that allows for movement, right? So the push rod can push on that slack adjuster and it allows for movement under pressure. Did I lose anybody yet? I know I'm talking kind of fast. We're okay? Whew. Glad you are. I'm sweating now. Okay, so let's talk about a spring brake chamber, okay? Spring brake chamber. We're gonna split this chamber in half. It's one chamber, but on the back side, we're gonna put a huge spring. Does anybody know what the strut looks like on a car? It's a big, heavy piece of metal spring. It's about the size of that marker, right? It's very heavy metal. They will take that spring, that spring sits about that tall, and they will compress it into about an inch and a half. Very dangerous. If that spring comes out of that back end of that chamber because it's rotted out or broken, it can kill you. This is a very dangerous scenario. There will be a, a pressed on clamp there. It will not be a screw on clamp. You can't take that apart. All right, so on a normal day, that spring is trying to do what? Expand, right? If that expands, pushes on the push rod, pushes on the slack adjuster, turns the S cam, and makes the shoes push against the drum. So the entire time that this vehicle is sitting with no air in it, that spring brake is pushing and holding the brakes. We're good? Simple concept. It works. It will never be on a steer axle though. Okay, it's only going to be on drive axles. Your steer axles will never have springs on them. They will only have service chambers. Okay, so now I want to move the vehicle. Here's the problem, right? I want to move the vehicle. Well, in order to move the vehicle, what do I have to do to the spring? Compress it, right? So they put a rubber diaphragm in here, kind of like a big balloon area, if you will. And what we do is hook up an airline to it. That airline will put a constant supply of air, expand, expand that balloon, and compress that spring. It's called a spring chamber. That red line is your emergency line. Okay? So the entire time that that vehicle is going down the road, we have air holding that spring compressed. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. If we don't have air holding that spring compressed, we break that airline, what happens? The spring comes out and that wheel locks up. Okay, now remember we, we just talked about the gauges. Normal pressure is 120, half of that is 60. There's your light and buzzer. Round 30, right? 20 to 45, what's happening? Brakes are coming out because we don't have enough air pressure to push that spring, that's why. That's what's happening. So if we lose enough air in the system, the truck is, the vehicle is going to stop. Okay. Now, let's talk about the front part of the chamber. All right, so in the front part of the chamber, we'll put another diaphragm here, a little rubber area, a little balloon. Okay, we'll put a spring up there, just enough to keep the parts moving in and out though. Because now, as we go down the road, we have a constant supply of air in that. Let's hook up another air line. And as you step on the brake, that amount of pressure will go in that ballooned area, that chamber, and push that rod out. That's your foot brake, that is your service brake. So if you put a 20 pound application on your service brake, it's putting 20 pounds of air pressure down into this and 20 pounds pressure against that rod, which is slowing that vehicle. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We're good with that? So you understand the, what's happening in that brake chamber now? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, two systems. 
We have the emergency system, right? Always color coded. What's the color coding? Always red color coding. Is it a constant or variable supply of air? Constant. Whatever's in the air tank is in that. Constant. Okay. What is controlling that? The dash knobs. The dash knobs are associated with this part of the system, and that's where you're putting the air, the dash knobs. Also known as a supply line, too. Okay. okay. Now, let's go to the other part of the system, which would be the service, which is color coded what? Blue. Blue. Constant or variable? Variable. Variable, based on how much you step on the brake pedal. What controls when the air goes into that? The foot brake. Foot brake, it's also called a check line, by the way. Any questions on that? If you're running tractor trailers, that's a hand valve for the trailer. That would also control the service brake, except only for the trailer. Okay, now you're going to get into an area where we gotta do air leakage, right? How do we know these air lines are going to hold? Okay, so if we were to turn the compressor off, because you don't wanna do this air test with the compressor on, right? Because if the compressor's building air, you can't see loss. So you would turn the engine off, okay? Maybe turn the key on so you can see your gauges. Okay, we'll put the transmission in gear so we don't move anywhere or chuck our wheels. And then we supply air to those spring brakes, okay? When we do that on a single vehicle, you can't lose more than two pounds per minute. On a combination, which means we add another vehicle to it, a trailer, you can't lose more than three. What if we had a set of doubles? Another vehicle before, right? Great. Now, once we pressurize that system, we did not lose more than our two pounds per minute on these single vehicles or single units. Now we gotta test the service part of it, right? So with the brakes released, parking brakes released, we would step on the service brake. Once we do that, now we cannot lose more than three pounds per minute on a single unit, four pounds per minute on a, a combination, and five pounds per minute on a set of doubles. Does everybody understand this little chart now? Mm -hmm. How many hands do you have? <laughs> Two, that's where this whole chart starts. So when you get into these pressure loss tests, okay? Draw this little chart, two, three, four, and then come this direction, two, three, four, five. There's your chart. Then we have to figure out a couple things. Are we talking about a single unit, combination, or set of doubles? Well, most of the time you're gonna be talking about one in this test. Probably single unit, right? So what pressures are we dealing with? Two and three. Now you've narrowed your answers. Now, are the brakes applied or released? That is your next question. Okay, so if the brakes are applied, we're down here. If the brakes are released, we're up here. You do not want to step on the service brake while the parking brakes are applied. Here's why. If you have this spring pushing on that push rod with all its pressure, and then we step on the service brake and add another 120 pounds pressure on top of the spring, we could damage the chamber, bend the push rod, or damage the slack adjuster. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about, brakes released or applied. Okay? When they say released or applied, they're actually referring to the service brakes. So the service brakes released or the service brakes applied. Okay? That's how you figure out your determination of the air loss rates. Now, the air compressor, remember we talked about the air compressor? The air compressor, we have to check that as well. So the air compressor, once we get done with this test, has to build from 85 to 100 pounds in less than 45 seconds. Okay, that's how we test our air compressor. Very specific area, very specific test. These numbers are all in your permit book. Okay, we'll get to it here in a second. Does anybody have a problem if I run over on time? Okay, I'm doing the best I can. Okay. So, any questions on this? Now, some of your buses will have a wigwag. Do you understand what a wigwag is? The wigwag is right by the visor, and it's a piece of metal that comes down in a wag in front of you, like the old school buses. They come down a wag and say, hey, by the way, we have low air pressure. Okay, a lot of those will come on 75, 85 pounds. Okay. 
That can come out with the light and the buzzer right around 60. That's fine. Some of your warning devices on the buses may come out between 70 and 85 pounds. That's fine. The minimum low pressure is 60 though. Okay, we're good with that. Any questions on this whole system here at the moment? Fantastic. Let me get this turned back on. I want to go through that permit book very quickly. This won't take long now. While that, uh, that's booting up, so starting at the top here, we understand the systems. We understand what the service brakes are now. We understand what the parking brakes are, the emergency brakes. Okay. Talk about the air compressor. Any questions on the air compressor? Any questions on the tanks? Tank drains? Alcohol evaporator, I'll talk about that. In cold weather, what they will do is sometimes put alcohol through the system to prevent freezing. It's only in cold weather conditions, and it would shoot a mist of alcohol into the system after the air dryer, okay? So on cold days, cold weather days, you would have to check the alcohol level. Make sure you top it up and deal with it every day. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, folks. The brake pedal, safety valves, all that stuff, we're good with that? Mm -hmm. Foundation brakes, that would be your basic brake system. That's called the S-CAM brake. That's the drum, the push rod, all that stuff. That's what they're calling the foundation brake. Remember, anything in the box is fair game. Wedge brakes, disc brakes, you're probably not gonna talk about a lot of that. The power screw is kind of the adjustment and the disc brakes. So they may ask a question about that, but that's about it. Supply pressure gauges, we talked about those. Air application pressure gauge, that would be a gauge that shows how much pressure you're applying to the foot brake, okay? Low warnings, we talked about that. We already talked about the wig wag, a stop light switch is the brake lights that come out when you step on the brake. Front brake limiting valves, there won't be any questions on that. What that was is old school trucks. There was a uh, valve on the dash that would cut the air pressure to the steer tires by half. That's all prior to 1975. They're probably not gonna ask any questions on that. We all understand what spring brakes are now? Parking brake controls, any questions on that? No. Modulating controls, that's old school trucks again, really old trucks, there's a modulator. So basically, if we had a problem, we'd throw the parking brake on with this modulating control and it'll bring the parking brakes on in increments. Okay, dual parking control valves. This may be something on a bus. It's the only place you will see it. That's the yellow dash knob, the yellow diamond, and this would have two of them, okay? One is your normal system, the other is a backup. It has its own tank, its own system, and it's spring-loaded. So let's say your bus broke down in the intersection. You could push that valve and hold it and just drive that bus out of the intersection enough to get out of harm's way. That's all that dual parking control valve is for. It's just in the emergency. Your parking control knob, again, is the yellow diamond. ABS, any questions on that? Okay. Dual air brake systems, any questions on that? Okay. Inspecting the air brakes, again, this is all part of the inspection process. Nothing really changes, just make sure everything is, is working. That's the key to that. Now, everything in a box. There's a box here that says the manual adjustment of automatic slot adjusters is dangerous because it might give a driver a false sense of security regarding the effectiveness of the braking system. Does everybody understand that? So even if you adjusted it, if it's a bad slack adjuster, it's going right back out of adjustment. Okay, so don't adjust them, that will be on the test. Anything in a box will be on the test. Check your drums, linings, hoses, we talked about that. Make sure they're not cracked, bent, broken, or leaking. Test your low pressure warning signal, we talked about that. Uh, low pressure signal, check the spring brakes come out automatically, okay. So continue to fan the brakes, we're gonna be fanning down, make sure those dash knobs pop out between 20 and 45. There's your air pressure build up rate, 85 to 145 seconds. There's a, pressure, a picture of the wig wag to the right side. We talked about the leakage rates, any questions on that? 
Okay, the air compressor should turn off right around 120 plus or minus five. The books are saying 125, which I'm fine with. How do we test the parking brake? The same as what we did yesterday in the hydraulic system. You put the parking brake on, you put the truck in gear, and you give it a little tug. That's how we test it. To test the service brakes, we release the parking brakes, drive them about five mile an hour, step on that service brake, and that should bring that vehicle to a nice stop, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, ABS, air brakes, it's all about the same. Moving through emergency stops, control braking and emergency brake or stand braking, all the same as what we just talked about. Stopping distance, this you will need to know. Brake lag is the amount of time it takes to, for the air to travel through the air system to apply the brake. Brake lag will extend your stopping distance. Okay, so we're gonna look at the stopping distance. We have perception plus reaction plus brake lag plus braking. Now what that does, that adds 32 to feet to the whole stopping <laughs> distance. That brings your total stopping distance over 450 feet. You will need to know those numbers for the test. 32 feet is what it adds, brings your stopping distance over 450. Length of a football field is 300 feet, so it's over the length of a football field. Brake fade versus failure, we've already talked about that. Proper braking technique, any questions? You said 32 feet to add and then what you said? You're right. That's on top of everything else. Okay. So that brings you to about 450. They may ask you a question regarding a football field. The length of a football field is 300 feet. This is more than the length of a football field overall. Okay. Now they do have another box here that says never leave your vehicle unattended without applying the parking brakes or chucking the wheels. Your vehicle may roll away. Any questions on that? No. There are only two times when you don't set the parking brake right away. If your brakes are wet and it's freezing conditions, or if your brakes are excessively hot coming down a hill. You get to the bottom of the hill, don't set the brakes. It will destroy the drums. Okay, and it actually can melt the shoes from the drums. Any questions on any of that?